Hey guys, so this is the uh, flyback special. So you've probably all seen this schematic before. It's got a 6 to 20 volt power supply. Right now I'm using about 8-ish, but I have a diode in line, so that drops it by about half a volt. So it's, it's really a 7.5 volt power supply I'm using. I'm staying on the lower end just to avoid you know, blowing up a flyback or anything, even though I have spares. Um, right here you have a 240 ohm resistor. This one for me is actually composed of three separate resistors of like 20, 50, and you know, 100 or so, and like 130 or something ohms. It gives me about eh, 229 or something. It's pretty close, and they're all about one watt. So you know, make this a pretty, pretty you know, nice you know, do at least half watt, three quarters watt, one watt resistor for this one. This one's a 27 ohm. I have two resistors about a watt each so it seems to handle it just fine I don't feel any heat on it but I never actually I wouldn't recommend touching the circuit right after using it because you can build up high voltage charge on the flybacks and such so this is a, a typical 2N3055 transistor you get like a bucket radio shack real cheap don't gotta worry about it okay N no big deal or if you're really in a pinch you can use the uh, horizontal output transistor that's in your TV it's gonna look it's gonna be a large transistor type usually in a TO220 or similar package and this right here these this is the difficult part the high voltage part is very easy to identify okay you have for the um the high voltage positive you have this suction cup that's usually attached to the CRT and then for high voltage negative you have right here that's connected to my green alligator clip right that pin I'll show you the pin out later but um basically what you do is you probe the pin on the flyback, right? All of those pins in that horseshoe shape. And all of the pins are going to have continuity, except one of them, in my case. And I'm sure that really, I've only got the circuit to work with this flyback transformer. Your flyback transformer must look like this. Must have the knobs, must have the, the three wires. Look like this, okay? It must, must look like that. I've never gotten it working. The key is probably any flyback transformer that has the ferrite core showing, like this right there, will work. Any transformer that doesn't, won't. Also in this one there's a little crack in the ferrite core, I'm not sure if it came like that or not, if I did that, but it still works. These coils right here are can be the hardest ones to find. You have the flyback coil here, and the primary coil here. So what you do is if you have the same, same trans flyback as me, these first two pins, which are going to be widely spaced. First two pins are widely spaced on the left side, those are your primary. Skip a pin, and then the next two are your flyback, and the pin after that is your um, high voltage negative, or, you know, one, of, one of these lines on the um, high voltage line. Right. So, um, now, if you're isn't my, like mine, which probably is going to be most of you, although I've found this is the only one to work, so give it a shot. Basically, um, you're going to get a series of continuity on your flyback, right? So you're going to test the continuity for all the pins. Just draw a diagram on your paper and mark it all out. And, you know, maybe mark how the flyback was on the original PCB if you have it. But those are just notes. You might not need them. So then on the continuities, right? Typically, your flyback coil will have only continuity to, to itself. So there will only be continuity between two pins, right? So if that's the case, then the continuity... The, the two pins where there's only continuity between them and no other pins, that's most likely your flyback. I've seen some flybacks have three, but most flybacks have only two pins of continuity. Oh, that's weird right there. There are like white spots on the paper. Anyways, your uh, primary is most likely going to have multiple contacts. Now, on my flyback, it happened the primary, primary did have multiple contacts, but one of them was unsoldered to the PCB. So I figured if they didn't need that fly, uh, pin on the flyback, I didn't need that pin on the flyback. So I didn't do it, and it worked just fine for me. So typically, your primary is going to have more contacts than your secondary, and you're just going to have to play around. And the way you know it works is when it whines. There's going to be a very high pitch whine, distinctive sound. Mine's a bit slightly lower pitch, but um, here, see if you can hear this. I'm going to plug it into the power supply and just turn it on. I have my, um, as a safety precaution, I have my negative return on a newspaper stick, and my high voltage is way away from anything. You want to keep all electronics away from that high voltage, okay? And you will see a, um, hear a return, right? Not to mention also the 2N3055 transistor 
should be on a heat sink right here. I have mine just tied down with that wire and hot glued onto the heat sink with some thermal paste. Anyways, here I'm going to turn it on right now and listen. Okay, so that's the typical whine you're going to get. It can be higher pitch or lower pitch depending on you know your coil arrangement and such. So now I'm going to show the arcs from the flyback, right? First I'll just go to the circuit of the, the return, the, sorry, the high voltage positive, goes into the flyback transformer. I just dialed these knobs all the way to the right because right is usually maximum. And then um, for the pins you have the two primaries, skip a pin, the flybacks, um, and the next pin is going to be your high voltage negative which goes through that line onto a little stick so I can not die when I'm using this thing. You have this uh, 2N3055 transistor on a heat sink. The resistors are in this um, heat shrunk tube. Uh, the heat shrunk tube didn't fit over those two. And I have that connected up to my power supply, which when, it, when it's on, reads like, you know, 8 volts. It's not completely accurate, but it's 8 volts, right? And there's also, I have an in-series diode, because you can get um, high voltage kickbacks sometimes. So, not often, but it's possible, so I just put a diode in so that there would be no access. So if I can get it to focus on this, a uh, huge, like you're going to find on the internet with those ZVS drivers and 555, this is really simple, but it works. So their sparks aren't huge, but they're pretty cool. Okay, so I don't have to leave that running for a long time as it, it could potentially damage the flyback, but those are some sparks for you, right? And here's some more some more views of the flyback. Just after the end here, I, I always hear some static charge when I touch the uh, high voltage return to the anode cap, so if I were you, I would do that. So here's your flyback. Sometimes you can also get high voltage on the ferrite core, so don't touch that. You got the knobs, a little plastic little plastic thing right there. I'm not sure what that's for, probably a screw. And all your horseshoe shaped pins on the bottom. I'm not sure what these wire going out to, but one of them is connected to the anode cap. Uh, sorry, not the anode cap. Um, is connected to the um, CRT. So I may plug that in, but I haven't plugged it in yet. So that's it for the uh, flyback driver, but now what I'm going to do is actually connect up the flyback to the CRT. So this is going to be really cool because it enables me to use the CRT and without the focusing coils and um, use my own focusing array or experiment with the focusing coils to create a better focus than was originally on the TV. So right now I'm going to be plugging the anode into this um, anode cap here on the CRT. I've unscrewed the um, thing from the, the flyback drive from the flyer supply, shorted out the pins, and shorted now out the... Um, I voltage return to the flyback, so I'm pretty sure that it is safe to use, right? You can touch it just fine. I was just shorting out the um, pin. So, you obviously you have to somehow get these in. I find this is impossible, especially, well, very close to it, especially when this um, is in the case, right? I have it in the case now just for structure and rigidity so it doesn't implode on me. So I find the best way to do this is to, to peel back the pin and uh, the camera's getting a bit in the way, but and grab the um, grab the sides of that, but not so grab the, the sides of it, but not the part that actually goes into the CRT with some pliers, and then stick it in there and let go. And with any luck, you will get it to stick without ever having to touch it. Oh no! Now you see there one side has came out, so you gotta reach in the pliers and peel it back in. Can't imagine this is good for the CRT you know, re-inserting it a lot, but, so let's see if I can use it in there. Yeah, so you see it's in, it's, it's clipped in. So now I can re-screw back into the power supply, but the power supply's not on, obviously.
But now I'm going to re-screw it back in the power supply. And here is the part that you're going to have to actually do some, some worrying. Here is the part that you're going to have to do some worrying about. This is the end of the electron gun on the TV. It can be difficult to connect to, and really like the flyback, it's going to be trial and error. So, on this TV, it turns out, and on every other color TV that I've taken apart, I can't talk for black and whites because I've never taken one of those apart, but on every color TV I've taken apart, you have the flyback, the anode cap, which obviously to run a uh, TV yourself, pretty simply, you just plug the anode into the anode cap. But then you also, the way these work is they have a, um, a heater inside, just like you would have in a light bulb or a, um, a tube, that uh, has thermionic emission. This, what this heater does is um, it emits electrons, and then you want the case outside of the heater to be negative, right, to be the high voltage return, because that's going to repel the electrons, it's going to suck them towards high voltage, right? So you want to do that. So first you have to find the pins towards the heater. That's accomplished re relatively simply with a... Um, continuity tester, right? They're, the pins are going to have continuity, or if not continuity, very low resistance. So as you can see, I've bent these two out to show that they are the um, heater coils. Right there is the heater coils. They're all connected together. There's three tubes in total. And outside, you see there's that little um, ring, right, connecting the tubes. So you want to find anything that connects to the outside case of the tubes in which the heater coils are, right? And you're going to follow that wire out to the... Um, to the cap thing. I'm not really sure what to call it. And you're going to find that in my case it is this third pin, right? So that's going to be where you hook up your high voltage return line, your negative line, whatever you wish to call it, right? And um, you just kind of want to make sure that that's not going to short to any of the other pins. But you can experiment because what I've done is I've made sure that none of these pins connect to each other except for the um, heater coils and that none of these pins ever connect to this high voltage line, which, you know, you you can be pretty sure that they wouldn't, but can't hurt to check, right? So, what I have done is that I've done that, made sure, and then you can just probe any of the pins with this return except for the heater coils, and you will see if, um, and you can see how the image changes on the screen. Uh, I found that this gives me the brightest one, but feel free to go ahead. Also, if you have this uh, thing and you clipped off this, clipped off this CRT lead, then, or you find that the CRT lead actually happens to be helpful, which I will do a test on later, you can actually solder this all up and make it permanent and plug it in and off. But at this point, mine's not permanent, right? So that's how you find which pin is the high voltage return pin and uh, which pin is the heater pin. So now I'm going to hook it up and actually show you it in use. It may not look initially as cool to as the sparks because, you know, any noob will just say, oh, well, I have an old TV, take it apart, and then there's your flyback transformer. So, you know, any noob can just say, oh, I want to make sparks go out and make this flyback driver. It's simple. doesn't require any effort at all to make. It's actually really, really easy. Just the, the largest effort for me was finding the resistors in my parts box because I didn't have any of the correct value. So, you know, this is, is it's, it's, it's pretty simple, but, you know, there, this doesn't have quite the appeal as the sparks do, but it is pretty neat to anybody who's into particle physics and just wants to appreciate this sort of stuff. I mean, and I admit... It's not as good as when the TV is focused correctly, but I'll do experiments in that as well. So I will connect up the heater coils and then get back. Okay, oh, finally my camera focused. Okay, so I have the, um, I have the, uh, heater coils connected up through some alligator clips. This thing, this is completely optional. It is a adjustable current power supply. Um, it's, it's really the only one I have, so it operates off a 9-volt battery. You need a pretty fresh 9-volt battery to do this. This one's 8 volts and it barely works. And so you just connect it up to the thing and adjust the current limit. So it's no more than 550 mi uh, milliamps. Sorry. It takes 500, th these coils take 550 milliamps on startup, and then when they're running, they take a 300-ish. So I'll plug in the 9-volt battery, and I have no hopes of showing this on camera, as you can probably show it to your own self on vision. But I will explain it just so you know how to see if your heater coils are working correctly. Is you can sort of 
Uh, you can't really see into the into the um, can to see if they're working right. But you know that when they um, turn when the uh, heat recoils are working properly, they should create an orange glow-ish, sort of similar to a light bulb, like a, a very dim light bulb. How you know how to create that orange glow? So if you tilt your head to just the right degree, when the glass is sort of slightly bending right here, you can just sort of see in, and when it's on, you'll be able to see an orange glow. And then once you see that orange glow, you wait. You know, these heater coils are pretty quick to warm up. But if you don't see an orange glow, that means that you're not putting enough, that, you know, your power supply is dead, it can't provide enough current, etc. I mean, this isn't typically super high current, but you want to just make sure that they're, they're going pretty nicely. Right, and uh, if your current supply is like mine, you can adjust down the current so that they're not glowing too bright and going to burn themselves out. So now I will attach the high voltage negative line again. Just make sure it's not shorting anything out. Plug this in, and hopefully it won't blow up on camera. If it did, you get spectacular. Ooh, ah, right. So that's not the interesting part. You don't want to see that. You want to see what's on the screen. This is the interesting part. Obviously, that pixel isn't on the screen. That is my camera sucking. So, you can see reflections in my workbench. If I turn this power supply on and... Oh, look at that. It's um, accelerating that onto the TV with the high voltage, right? So maybe I can get a better view straight on. Yes, I can. Um, I'm not sure if that is great to be in front of as it could be emitting x-rays because you could be operating this TV out of spec. So I wouldn't stand right in front of it and I would stand it a decent distance away. I'm, I'm sitting, you know, a good foot or two away to avoid any x-rays because the air should take care of any x-rays accelerated in only 16 kilovolts. It's pretty low. It's, you know, 16 kilovolts is a nominal figure for these flybacks. So anyways, um, that's, that's what happens when you connect a flyback to the TV again. I'll just do it once more. It accelerates the electrons. Now this is because it's probably operating only two of the guns. There should be really three circles, or one circle that's better focused. Um, the reason that that happened is because probably only two of the guns are operating. Probably I blew one of the coils with too much current or too much voltage. I'm operating at you know probably six, uh, probably seven or so volts. You probably should run them down at s between three and six. But, eh, no, you know, I don't really care. I have three more electron gun CRT combos to blow up. So anyway, that's what it would look like without focusing. Um, with focusing, or, uh, sorry, without focusing, and if you're running all three guns and you haven't got any magnets near it, you can sometimes get a white-ish circle on the front. This, um, so that's um, something interesting that you can find out. I'm going to play with a focus on camera a bit and if I get it, I will tell you guys. Put it on. So uh, here, all I've done to focus the um, dot more precisely than it was focused before is attach on this CRT cap. Now, as you can see, it's connected to a wire to the flyback transformer, and I'm not really sure which pin on this the wire goes to, but I suspect it is the one that is inside the um, inside the flyback. I suspect that that is the one. So um, I've just to, to get this. I've just desoldered it off of the um, TV with the rest of the uh, flyback since it was connected. I figured, and plus it was the uh, you know part of the flyback circuit. So I did, and um, you can see the effect that it has on the focusing. It has a phenomenal effect on focusing. It's great for focusing. So you see, this is with it on. Oh, look at that, right? Nice clear dot, right? It's not very large. And if we turn it off for a sec so it doesn't heat up, I'm running out of time, and I turn it on again, look at this, I can actually move it around with a magnet, right? Like I could with the original dot. Swing it around. So it appears that the flyback through this wire is producing some sort of intermediate focusing voltage of a couple hundred volts or so. So that's interesting. So that's how to focus and use the CRT without any of the electronics. Bye.